Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to continue on and we're going to talk about the transition step, or even sometimes they call it the preparation phase. So if you remember, we left off with forming pyruvate from glycolysis, right? So from glycolysis, we made pyruvate. <clears throat> and pyruvate was a three carbon molecule, right? It was a three carbon molecule that we formed from the end product of glycolysis. And if you remember, I said, so again, it's three carbons. If you remember, I told you that the only way that pyruvate can get taken into the mitochondria, right, is if there is oxygen. Because and remember, NADH that was generated within glycolysis has to go and drop those hydride ions onto the electron transport chain. If not, and there's no oxygen, it drops those hydrides off onto pyruvate and converts them into lactic acid. And this pathway won't occur. But if there is oxygen, so again, when is this part occurring? This is occurring in the presence of oxygen. In other words, it has to be under aerobic conditions. So the only way the pyruvate can get taken into the mitochondria and start getting converted into this next molecule is if there is oxygen present. Now, when pyruvate is transported from the cytosol into the mitochondria, there's a specific enzyme right here that's going to be controlling this. We're going to talk about this in more detail in the biochemistry video. But specifically, look what happens here. Pyruvate is three carbons, right? Look what happens at the end of this reaction. It goes from three carbons to two carbons. Another thing happens. Let me show it like this. Look at this. You see that right there? I added something onto this two carbon molecule. This two carbon molecule has this thing on it called a coenzyme A. So what did I do? I took pyruvate, which is my three carbon molecule. So this is my pyruvate. And guess what I converted into? I converted into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA is two carbons, pyruvate is three carbons, so that means I had to lose a carbon. I do. And whenever you lose carbons, you know, whenever, you know what's called whenever there is a removal of a carbon? They call that decarboxylation. Okay, so decarboxylation is removing a carbon off of this substrate in the form of CO2. So that's one part of this enzyme, okay, that's going to be working. I'm going to mention the enzyme in a second. Another thing that the enzyme does is, obviously, it's adding on this coenzyme A. It's adding on this coenzyme A. This is getting added into this reaction. You know what else is happening? I'm taking NAD positive, and I'm converting this into NADH. So this guy has, must, has a specific hydride ions that I'm going to rip off of him in order to convert him into acetyl-CoA and for him to be able to gain hydride ions. So now, here's another thing. Remember I told you that at the end of glycolysis I formed pyruvate, right? But how many of the pyruvates? Two. I'm actually making two of these pyruvates. So I'm actually getting two pyruvate molecules. So if I'm getting two of these pyruvate molecules, how many acetyl-CoA's am I making? Two. If I'm making two acetyl-CoA's, how many CO2's am I actually generating? I'm technically one from the first pyruvate and then another from the second pyruvate. So that is a total of two CO2's. How many CoA's am I adding into this process then? I must be adding in two CoA's because I'm going to get two acetyl-CoA's. And how many NAD positives are being converted into NADHs. Well, if there's two pyruvates, one for one pyruvate, and then second for the other pyruvate. So this is two of these. This whole process is regulated by a specific enzyme. And this enzyme, we'll talk about this in great detail in biochemistry, this enzyme is called a pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. And this enzyme is super, super interesting. But he is the enzyme that is catalyzing this reaction here. He is the one who is catalyzing this reaction. Now, whenever this happens, remember that this is a, this is a irreversible step. In other words, this step can't go 
backwards. I can't go from acetylcholate to pyruvate. So remember that PDH is not going to be a reversible enzyme. It's irreversible. It only works in unidirectional, not bidirectional, only one direction. So again, as a result, what did I get out of this transition state? I went from, I brought the pyruvate into the actual mitochondria and the presence of oxygen, aerobic conditions. In other words, the NADH had to drop those hydrides onto the electron transport chain. If that happens, pyruvate gets brought into the mitochondria, acted on by the pyruvate dehydrogenase, and then what happens? This enzyme will pull off two CO2 molecules, add in two CoA's, generate two NADH's, and form two acetyl-CoA's, which will then go down into the Krebs cycle. All right, in the next video, we're gonna go over the mechanism of this process in more detail and the regulation. All right, see you then.